I don't want to rush, but I wrote down some points so I can get to the point. I used her comment to tell y'all how I trust God financially. And I'm going to give y'all the raw truth. And that's just me. I'm a very transparent person. And God is allowing me to share this. Um, everybody talks about Matthew 6 and 33 through 34. Seeking first the kingdom of God um, and live righteously. Like People talk about that, but they don't really break it down correctly. But this is what I live by. This is not just a scripture I quote. This is a scripture I live by. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously. I'm going to just stop there. There's a comma, but I'm going to stop there. When you're seeking God first, you're making him a priority. And it's God, what are we doing today? Do you, all, do you read your word? Do you make him a priority? How's your prayer life? Do you talk to him? When he, makes, when he wakes you up in the middle of the night, do you know what to pray or pray for and pray off? The dream that you just had before God woke you up. Did he wake you up to pray off that demonic covenant that Satan was trying to get you to come into agreement with? Because some of y'all be having dreams of y'all eating in y'all dreams. That's witchcraft. Do you know to pray off of that? Like, how much do you make God a priority? Do you make him a priority? But when you are in right, when you're righteous, when you live righteously, that means you're in right standing with God. So when you keep his laws, when you're not breaking his laws, Satan don't have legal right over you. So a lot of the reason, a lot of the times why y'all have financial problems is because Satan has legal right over that. So some that means somebody done broke, broke some laws. Okay, if something is something happening where you're like, dang, every time I get a car, something always happening, brother. Like, something's wrong with my car. Dang, I'm always behind on rent. I'm always behind on this. It just I'm always behind in. Best believe you broke some laws somewhere and Satan now got legal right over that. Um, and he will give you everything you need. So you seek you first the kingdom of God and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. Now, I showed y'all when I got a late payment notice for my second apartment and I wrote on the back of it. And part of it, I said... I'm just always, I keep going through this loophole of poverty. Why? Like, I literally just be wanting the simple stuff. I try to save as much as I can. They just seem like there's a hole in my pocket. Why? God made it very known to me that I was breaking laws. Did I want to hear that? No, I did not. I want my bills paid. But, I mean, either I keep going through this toxic cycle and not holding myself accountable, not humbling myself before God, Second Chronicles 7 and 14, so that he can heal or restore my land. Either I can keep going this dumb toxic cycle, or I can just go to him and be like, what laws am I breaking? Like, what am I breaking? What am I doing? I'm sitting there asking him what laws am I breaking, but I was living with my boyfriend at the time. I was living with my boyfriend. And it's going to get real deep because some of y'all are in this situation. You are still dating somebody that is legally married. They may not be in a functioning marriage, but they are still in covenant with that person. God don't play about his laws. He stand on principle. He stand on biblical principle. So as it is like, even if they're not married to the right person, they could be married to a whole witch. But because... They are in covenant with someone else. They took them vows and did what they marriage certificate and all. They are in covenant. They are in covenant. And it goes real deep. It goes very deep. So even if that man is with you and y'all are shacking up together and all this other stuff. And his, because that's still his wife. She could be with somebody and they shacking up too. They may not be in a functioning marriage. They may not have been together in the same state and all this other stuff for years, but they're still married. They're still in covenant. They got zero feelings. They got like, literally no feelings for each other. Covenant is what matters. Covenant. And a lot of people, they do this because they're like, oh, it costs so much to get a divorce and all this other stuff, but... You're still in covenant with that person. That's breaking the law. So you're committing adultery. And that's why my finances 
and not just my finances but my healing and everything else was on hold because I got myself into that that could even be your that could still even be your future spouse but God stand on his he stand on principles he don't play so yeah that could be your future husband your future wife but that has to be dealt with first and then y'all may still have to go through some type of separation where refinement has to happen oh it goes deep but i'll stop there having sex outside of marriage of course fornicating you are in covenant with satan kingdom of darkness you owe him he has legal right over you and i'm listing things that was that i broke okay sodomy acts you giving him head he giving you head that is an act of sodomy that is not of God. That's a law. That is a law. Take that back to God because that is a law. It does not procreate. That's a law. A lot of people are going to disagree, but these be the same people that don't make God a priority. Pride, lust, bitterness, which is resentment and unforgiveness. This was all the things that God was letting me know why I'm always in a loophole of poverty. But if you reject this, because, oh, it's not that deep, then that's why you perish as well, for lack of knowledge. And the gift of knowledge is of the Holy Spirit. That's a gift of the Holy Spirit. So you're rejecting God, so God is going to reject you. Read Hosea chapter 4, whole chapter. And so I had to go through my refining season. I was homeless for eight, nine months, sleeping in my car and everything. Sleeping in my car from July 3rd, 2023 to November 12th, 2023 went to Houston, Texas for five days. Didn't know I was going to be there for five days on some Abraham type stuff. Trusting God. I passed the test. <laughs> I sacrificed my car, the same car I was living in. Came back. Didn't know where I was going to go, but I stayed with a relative for two and a half months. Did what I was supposed to do there despite the betrayal, but I still did what God wanted me to do there. Um, went back he told me to go back to Houston, Texas, slept in an airport for a month. It was the worst. That was part of my pruning, refining process, and I cried almost every night, but I still let God use me. I walk in the office of a prophet. That was very uncomfortable. I did not shower for a month. I washed myself out out of a whole sink. But you know what? God was still providing for me. I would be asleep at the airport for a whole month. And when I would remove the cover away off of my head, somebody's in my face saying, are you hungry? Mind you, it's other homeless people in the that's sleeping at the IAH Houston airport. And people that were working there were coming up to me, helping me and everything. That's another, I'll tell that testimony another day. I'll never stop talking about that because y'all don't understand. People on TikTok would send me money back to back to back. I cried, like, never forget also not being a good steward of your money you give in you may be oh, oh i'm just such i have a big heart stop giving family and other people money that god has blessed you with they're not even a good steward for their money i want you to read matthew 7 and 6 through 7 it talks about giving your pearls to swine also micah 3 and 5 through 7 this this reminds me of ministries that get upset when you refuse to give to them but they're defiled you give into a, a ministry or a church that is defiled meaning they're robbing god they're breaking laws they're breaking covenants they're touching people they're fornicating they're having sex with different people like just messy i grew up in a church like that you are now coming into full agreement with what that ministry is doing therefore your finances are affected take it back to god so you have to break these covenants and live a life of repentance. You got to live a holy, consecrated life. To be consecrated means to be set apart. To be holy means to be set apart. And so you should meditate on Deuteronomy chapter 8 every day. But I fully depend on God. I don't have a 9 to 5 and stuff like everybody else do. He's not a respecter of persons. He will help me. He will definitely help you. I hope this helps. If not, I'll make another video.